I'd like to see Joe Thornton be effective. <laughs> no, that's not unpopular. Dude, you can't uh... – if he was named anything other than Joe Thornton, he'd be out of the lineup. Um, he's also paid like league men, you know. Or yeah, green. like it's not it's not anything against the guy. No, but uh, for God's sake, like here, let me let me go through his his game by game, and I know he battled an injury and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So he comes out of the gate preposterous. So no points, no points. Two, none, none. Two, one, three, one, one, nothing. One since that. He's got one assist, and that was March 13th. Oof. That was his last point. It was over a month ago, if you want to put it that way. Now, the most he's played in a game is just under 15 minutes. He's he's mostly around 12, 13-ish. But for God's sake, you, you gotta be you gotta be contributing. You, you got to get something in there. He, and he's part of the power play too. Mm-hmm. And like, I'm less con- uh, concerned with his lack of production at five on five and far more concerned with the fact that he's still in the power play and the power play has been garbage. So you have no Matthews, no Nylander tonight. I bet you they score on the power play. I probably, I mean, Adam Brooks, that was his first uh, NHL goal against the Oilers without Matthews. And uh, I think it was Spezza passed it and it just bounced off him. There you go. Whatever, they all count. Don't ask how, ask how many, all that shit. And he's from Winnipeg, so it means something for him. Okay, Okay. cool. (laughs) Mm. I'm just being Pierre Maguire about all this. I'm sorry. I think it'll be, I'm, I'm, I'm curious to see how it'll go. I think this is one of those weird, interesting games. Like, I remember when the Leafs were terrible like horrendously bad, not like right after the horror check era. Cause they weren't supposed to be bad, but the next year when they were the first season with Babs and like, you know, Kadri, oh. you know, trying to train him and Morgan Riley getting the worst minutes in the history of man and uh, Michael Grabner being snake bit the whole season, whatever. I found those games interesting because it was like a Petri dish. It's like, w- let's just throw a bunch of shit out on the ice and see what happens. And I think tonight is a little bit of that. Obviously, you want to see this team compete, play like a playoff team, et cetera, et cetera. But I like when you have new members in the lineup because it just feels like after a while, um, you know, every game when you're watching is like, geez, I hope they win this. And it's nice to not have that stress. It's like, well, if they don't win this, it's not the end of the world. And also, they're playing a whole bunch of new guys who will be interesting to watch. Do you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Right. Here, can I, can I read you the lines and then also the power play? Love it. Let's do it. So they've gone full blown line line blender. So this is from Kristen Chilton. She always posts the lines. It's Galch, Tavares, Marner. So they've just taken Tavares, moved him up one mm-hmm. slot, nice and easy. Second line: Hyman, Kerfoot, Mikheyev. Okay. Uh, Thornton, Engvall, Simmons. Okay. And Robertson, Brooks, Spezza, which that is, is gonna... that's full blown petri dish. That is that's guessing. Yes. That's, that's fun. That's putting on a blindfold and throwing a dart. Um, and then the defense is the same. Looks like Campbell's going to get the start. The power play. Uh, funny that we should uh, be talking about Joe Thornton. So the top unit is Riley on the back end, Hyman eating pucks with his mouth, and then Galchenyuk, Tavares, Marner. Hmm. The second unit, Muzzin, who I've noticed has taken the, uh, the has, place of Brody recently. pretty good. Yep. Uh he is there with Robertson. Robertson slotting in on the power play. Thornton, Spezza, Simmons. So that's the grumpy old man plus Muzzin and Child. Right. Uh, <laughs> power play unit. I uh, I hope they get a dumb one. I have a feeling, too, if they ever score on the power play ever again before we all die, uh, they're going to get like three in the same game. Yeah. It's going to be dumb. Like, isn't yeah. that just how it works? That's how percentages seem to work, right? It all evens out, but you yeah. it's like dry, 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 hot, 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 that sort of thing. That's what it I is. mean. Their power play has like if you <laughs> you can divide the season, it's literally the best and the worst. The the least power play is probably ranked 15th, but it's never been middle of the pack. It's either been the best or a bag of shit. There it is. There's the first one. We'll see how many I get in this episode. Do you guys have uh, any takeaways from Anderson skating today and good. going on the road with the team as well? Good. I good. think it's good to have him there. Yeah. 
I don't know. Like it, it, it would seem unfair to like, remember the Lou Lamorello, if you're injured, you don't even show your face at the arena. Remember that? Yeah. Well, because you're just focused on shitty. getting better. And no, I think that's, I don't know. I that's think old, that's a bit is it, is it a sign that maybe he gets a start within the next seven days is seven games ish. Sure. Know? Seems like that. And then he what should. do you, what's what you, so we're carrying three goalies now like what's well, the, i'm gonna read i'm gonna read what cj said okay. um on his uh he said it's not clear if they'd even be able to make the roster moves necessary to activate him before the start of the playoffs which may end up being a moot discussion because it doesn't sound like he'll be healthy enough to play anytime soon mm. according to sheldon Keith, the fact that he's back out here today and skating uh and skating previously because this is not the first time he's skated apparently mm -hmm. it's this a good sign he's time. making progress i don't think he's close at this point to actually playing but this is all part of the process. My understanding is he's going to come on the road with us. So that's very, very encouraging. It's a really, really good to have him back out there in his gear. And I think, I think that's part of, you know, if you're the Leafs management now, I mean, yeah, you want to win the North division and that's cool. Whatever. That's great. You want to do that. You want to have home ice advantage. I get it. But more importantly is you want to have a room full of guys that absolutely would die for each other. You look at how, right how the Carolina Hurricanes are. And I, I love referencing them because they are team spirit all the way and they have been for three or four years. They will run through a brick wall for their coach and for each other. And Freddie Anderson is a popular guy in that dressing room. They just love him. And you can see why. I mean, he, he saved their ass for three and a half years and he's also a really good person. And so having him miss out on what potentially could be their best shot, you know, it, it, because he's injured, not only seems a little unfair, it just, it just would suck the air out of the room a little bit and suck the joy out of it because you'd be like, Freddie, I wish you were here. It doesn't feel right. at home rehabbing. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I know, I know it's a business. You got to get better any way that you can, but there's something about the way he helped this team come up that just tossing them to the side, like dirty laundry, the yuck, yucky. I don't like it. Like if he ends up losing his job, to Campbell or hell, even Riddick, uh, fine, but let him, let him lose it. Like Jesse made the point. You can't lose your job to injury and you certainly can't lose your job to injury after four and a half years of being this team's starting goaltender. It's not fair. Maybe you can, maybe you can, maybe it's performance. <laughs> guys. Depends on what depends on what game in the playoffs it is. <laughs> yeah. Oh no. If he plays game one and is shit, yeah. get out of here yeah. but like but that's, at least that's him playing a game he got the opportunity to lose it jack right. campbell jack campbell starting to the playoffs guys right. we'll see we've had this I, conversation that's that <laughs> is fight. inevitably how it's gonna go but yeah. they're gonna the give freddie the chance you. i will go to i will drive to oshawa and refled your basement and shut okay, off your... okay okay let's not go say <laughs> reckless shit how dare you if ptsd every time it rains i touch the floor make sure it's okay <laughs> At Still least your dry. basement looks incredible now. Like, I know. It's amazing. Yeah, it's anyway. because I haven't had any scoundrels in it for yeah. 14 he, months. He might be broke, but he's got a nice basement. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, it's warm uh, now. And uh, your dogs so, haven't pissed in it for a long time. Adam, nice. Jesse, both of you. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Too. Hey, I my dog remember. pissed in the basement and by the front door. <laughs> So that's true. She she marked all of her territory. Didn't Bindi take a shit in this very room? Just gonna say every time every time Bindi came over, she shit in your house, and she doesn't <laughs> shit in anyone's house. I don't know why. And then she shit in your fucking office, man. I don't I don't get it. I don't understand. Charlie and her fought. R.I.P. Charlie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember, yeah, um, Charlie was great because I've never seen a more food driven dog in my entire life. I had a bag. Oh, and. It was like a, it was like a, it's a converse bag, but it's like a duffel bag. It's a really yeah. nice bag. Nice bag. And I brought food down for Bindi because I was staying overnight. And that's, this is one of the times Bindi shit in Steve's house. And uh, <laughs> anyway, so I wanted to make sure I had food to feed her in the morning, whatever. Charlie sniffed it out. He should have been a bomb sniffing dog. The guy was, his nose was unbelievable. Oh, and yeah. he arrived like laser focused. So I go to my bag later on and there's a huge hole in it and two <laughs> To, like the, the clothes are nicely, gently put off to the side. Mm -hmm. The plastic container is in somehow is popped open. Don't ask me how. It wasn't like it was torn apart. It was just popped open and every single morsel of food was gone. I wasn't even upset because it was so clean. Like he left it like it was in the dishwasher. It was unbelievable. And that dog, man. Every single time it was Iggy going, you'll be hanged for this. <laughs> and Charlie said, no, I'm going to get chewed out. I've been chewed out before. <laughs> 